Hello folks. So today um, I'm going to show you how to read the animal chart. It's always read in conjunction with your natal chart. Yes. And actually there's so much information one can extract from the annual chart. And when you read it with your natal chart, you can get a much better idea of when a particular event in your life will transpire. So it works really well when you use it in conjunction with your birth chart, in conjunction with the transits. And even the quality of the event, like whether it will give strong results or not so strong results, you can also gauge that. You can get some hints from that annual chart. Yeah? So let's get into this. Now, some astrologers, um, they prefer to use a Tithi, uh, tithi Pravesh to see the annual horoscope, uh, which is more of a focus on the moon. But I have found better results with reading the annual chart using the Varshapal. And that's the way that I, you know, um, operate with, like, with, when I do annual readings for people. So um, I'm going to show you an example chart, an, an example of an annual Varshapal chart. And I'm actually using my own my own details here from many years ago, not recent. Um, but it's a fantastic year for me to demonstrate how events can be seen through the annual chart. So first, um, just a little bit of a like an intro about how to, you know, what, what the what the phrase is, what the terminology is. So we look at the year Lagna. The year Lagna. Not your Lagna, your, the, year, the annual chart's year Lagna. It's Lord. And where it has gone in the annual chart, right? We look at the Munta and its Lord. And finally, we look at the Vrshesha Lord to give a general vibe of the year. Right? Vrshesha basically means year Lord. So the general rule from Parashra is to focus on the Lord of the Lagna, the 10th Lord, and exalted planets. The Dasha, or the Muddha Dasha in this case, of exalted planets, as they tend to be the most significant. And this is the same rule that we apply in the annual chart as well. The word Muntha, the phrase Muntha, that's basically in the annual chart, is effectively, it's linked to the birth Lagna in that it has progressed. So it's the progression of the Lagna. And it, it progresses by one sign per solar year. And that's what we call the Munta point in the annual chart. Yes? Varshesha, which is the Lord of the year, as I mentioned, dominates the events of the year. So for example, if Varshesha is the sun in your annual chart for that year, then you can see themes revolving around uh, authority, physical health, vitality becoming important. Career also, right? Sun is the cargo of the 10th house. If sun is strong, then these areas will prosper. Otherwise, they will suffer. Sun in the annual chart. So here, using my own chart, I'm going to demonstrate three major events that took place in the same year that also shaped my life for a very, very long time to come. You know, the cannot go back from this event sort of events, right? The irreversible type of events. Um, so here we see we have Munta, we have the Munta point, the progression. We, we see that it's in the seventh house. So we know it gives relationship potential. But Mars is the Lord of the seventh here. And it is with moon in the fifth house, which can result in fights 
in disagreements in relationship, whatever it is. But it's with the moon, so we know that something with residence can change also, right? Due to a relationship, perhaps. But certainly a moon is on the cards. Which brings me to event number one. I moved to London in this year. Happened during the Muddha Dasha. Muddha Dasha is calculated by, like, again, your annual, the, like the, the, the planets in your annual chart, right? So it happened during the Muddha Dasha of Saturn moon. Saturn is fourth lord in the ninth house. And I moved abroad. Moon is a natural garka for home and residence. Saturn moon. In the natal chart, in my own natal chart at that time, I was in the Dasha of moon also. Mahadasha. Moon Venus. And in my natal chart, Moon and Venus are in a Bernie Martin exchange with the ninth and the tenth house. So we know the ninth and the tenth house are going to get activated. Right? The annual the annual chart is confirming that. So it was actually a relationship that took me abroad. So you see the link with the relationship. So Venus is impacting fourth house of home via aspect and connecting with moon through the exchange. Event number two that year that happened was my father's death. How can we see that in this chart? Well, that's, we look at it like, at first glance, we can see it. Ninth Lord is going to the eighth house. Whenever something goes, whenever, whenever a, a planet is going in the eighth house, it's twelfth from itself. Right? Ninth Lord in the eighth house. So it's going twelfth from itself. So indicating a loss. Loss of father. Ninth Lord. Happened during Mercury Rahu Mundadasha. Both are sitting in the eighth house. Death was sudden and there was a mystery surrounding it. Rahu, eighth house. Eighth house, just being activated. Saturn Sun conjunction happening in the ninth house. Sun is a garka for father. Right? So Saturn has afflicted that sun. And by the way, it's interesting because in my, in my chart, my birth chart, in my D12 chart, in my D12 chart, there's a Saturn sun conjunction and that was activated also at that time. See, this is like, this is kind of like a nice way to use a Varga chart as well. D12 is, is, is for, for your parents, you see, for your parents. Um, sun is of course Garga for father. In my natal chart, I was in moon sun. Again, sun is coming up. And in my natal chart, it, ha it so happens that Sun is in Gemini and Saturn was transiting over there. Do you see how the, the, the connections are happening with the annual chart and the natal chart? Gave you strong in the second house of family, loss, separation from the family. Even D9 can tell us this info, 8th Lord in the 12th house. Sun is uh, in Marakastan, right? In 12th house. And Ketu is in the 9th house. So, event number three. Um, the third house of my natal chart is activated. And where is Venus? It's, just, it's in its own house with friends, Mercury and Rahu. When I say the third house of natal chart, what am I talking about? If you see this annual chart, Libra is the Lagna. From the perspective of my birth chart, that Libra is my third house. Very important to see that. 
what is the what is the rising sign of the annual chart and where does it fall from the perspective of your birth lagna that field that that is a field of activity for that year like for example we say if in your annual chart your seventh house is rising that could be the year that you start a relationship or get married right so this year the third house of my natal chart libra like nine the annual chart is activated and where is that like lord it's in its own house with friends mercury and Rahu. Mars is a yoga yogarka planet for me because I'm a, a Leo Lagna, and in, in 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 my natal chart, I was going through a Venus return, and Venus is sitting in my tenth house. Do you see how that that confluence is happening? There's exalted Jupiter sitting in tenth house of in the annual chart. There is tenth Lord going into the fifth house of own business. So we know exalted Jupiter sitting in the 10th house of the annual chart. We know that there's going to be some auspicious event related to career at home. Because we, what we say in the beginning, we, talk, we talked about exalted planets. You have to pay special attention to them, right? They will bring auspicious results. And in this case, it was for both. It was, it was residence change as well as career. I'm setting up my own business. So... Tenth Lord, Moon, going into the fifth house of own business with Mars. So when did I set it up? In the dash, in the Mudda Dasha of Moon. It's a Chandra Yoga. This is a, uh, this is the Chandra Mangal Yoga happening in the fifth house, right? So which is. Uh, uh, a, a, another indication, like, so you can see yogas as well. You can see yogas as well transpiring in the annual chart. And I have the same yoga happening in my, like, in my D9 chart. So, and that was being activated at that time also, because I was in Moon, I was in Moon Mahadasha. Um, and what is Leo? Natural fifth house, own business on creation of some sort, or it could be your own project, creation, whatever it is. You always have to look for repeating patterns. This activates the yoga in the chart, <clears throat> and thus the chances of the event transpiring are even more, right? So that's the three events. Um, now points to consider with death, just generally. Um, you don't just see one person's chart, right? Like, it's, like you, you look at other family members' charts too, to see. I mean, death is not something that I normally will predict for anybody anyway. It's not something that I would like to do. Um, but if you know that it's a, you know, it, it's, a, it's a pending event, you look at other people's charts to confirm. The strongest yogas being made were with like with a four ten access. Right. And in my chart I have Rahu Ketu in the four ten four ten access. So again that's whatever you have in your birth chart normally, like your natural Proclivity is there and that's getting activated in the annual chart. So of course the chances of the event transpiring are even greater when that happens um, It increases the chance of manifestation Right as nodes were hitting that axis during transit So this is a glimpse into the Varshafal annual chart Always read it in conjunction with the natal chart. Otherwise, you're not going to get results and also read it in conjunction with the ongoing dashas and the transits to arrive at the best probability. Yeah, so that's all for now. Cheers.